Hey, welcome to module number 26, and today we're going to talk about pre-foreclosures. So a couple modules ago, we talked about foreclosures, which is when you fall behind on your loan payments to a lender, and they go ahead and file paperwork with the courts to foreclose on your home so that they can take it over and sell at an auction to recoup the funds in order to pay back their loan they lend it out to you. As the homeowner, you know, you're you might stop making payments if you don't have the income, um, if you can't afford payments anymore, or maybe your home is not worth what the loan is. You know, your loan is more than what your home value is. If your home price has gone down, uh, if the market's been crashing, and it just makes no financial sense anymore to keep paying those high loan payments uh, when the property's not even worth it. So these are different reasons that a foreclosure might occur. Now, as a pre-foreclosure, you are helping a homeowner get out of trouble financially with the lenders. So pre-foreclosure, you know, this is the initial stage uh, where the homeowner, maybe they've been in default for the last 90 days. So they've fallen behind for three months and they haven't caught themselves up yet. So the lender starts issuing letters to them saying, you know, you've got so many days to catch yourself up or we're going to take legal action. So this is the pre-foreclosure period that we're talking about. All right, so on the foreclosure letter sent to the homeowner by the lender, it's gonna give an expiration date that the letter is gonna expire as this is the last possible date. The homeowner can try to catch themselves up before the legal action is taken on the foreclosure by the bank. And it's also gonna list the amount on the letter that the homeowner needs to catch up so that it's clear how much they've fallen behind and are in default. So as the investor, you know, as the seller gets closer to this uh, expiration date on the letter, they're gonna become more and more motivated to sell their property. So this is what's gonna become a great opportunity for you to swoop in, find a motivated seller who's nearing that expiration date and they're desperate to get out of their property before the foreclosure happens. So this presents opportunity to use the investor to buy the property from them and get everyone out of the trouble there. And the bank will be happy because they get their loan back and you get the property hopefully for a good investment deal and the seller gets out of the pre-foreclosure foreclosure process. One additional way as the investor for you to help out in a pre-foreclosure situation is called a subject to. So in other words, if you see a seller is behind on their mortgage payments and they're facing foreclosure, you know, they're in that pre-foreclosure phase, you can go in and take over their mortgage for them. So they're gonna assign you the rights to the property and they're going to go ahead and keep the mortgage in their name and you're going to go ahead and make the payments for them and catch them up. So they're still taking that risk uh, being in default of, you know, risking their credit and stuff like that if the foreclosure happens. So they're trusting you to come in and actually make those payments to catch them up. But you're going to sign, you know, legal contracts showing that, you know, they're keeping the mortgage in their name. You're not going to take the mortgage into your name because uh, that's going to alert the banks that you know the seller selling the house and you don't want to necessarily alert the banks that you're the seller selling the house so you want to keep the mortgage in their name but you're going to get rights to the property so during the you're going to just basically take over the mortgage for the seller so you're going to own the property and let's say they have 10 years left on their mortgage so you're going to be able to you know own that property over those next 10 years making the monthly mortgage payments for that seller uh, but you can do whatever you want with the property so you can lease it out or at some point you can go ahead and sell it if you want. So that's called a subject to. Uh, you're just taking over the mortgage for the seller, catching them up and then making the monthly payments for the rest of the duration of the seller's loan. And it's gonna stay in the seller's name so that it doesn't alert the bank that the seller has sold the property to an investor like you because of the due on, clause, uh, the due on sale clause. So it's a clause that most banks will stick in their loans so when the seller sells a property, you know, then the loan balance is going to become due and it's just easier to keep, therefore keep it in the seller's name. So that wraps up today's quick lesson on a strategy. You can find properties, uh, the pre foreclosure phase, it's going to be in public records. You're going to be able to see, you know, the documents where, uh, the banks have started filing for foreclosures that people are the notice of defaults, I guess would be the correct legal term for the document that you can look up in public records. You're going to find uh, property owners who have been served notice of defaults 
and you're going to be able to approach the sellers uh, and see how motivated they are to get out of their foreclosure situation. And those that are close to the expiration date on their foreclosure demand letter, uh, they might be motivated to do a subject to deal where you catch up their payments for them and then over take their mortgage and make the monthly payments and you get possession of the house, they move out and they go live elsewhere uh, while keeping the mortgage in their name and just trusting you that each month you're going to make the payments for them. So that wraps up today's video on pre-foreclosures. Thank you for tuning in and be sure to check out tomorrow's module. We've got another real estate investing strategy coming to you. Take care.